So the internet runs out and everybody goes to California where there's 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 uh jobs there's rich, and there's internet. There's internet in California. I mean, what would you do if there was no internet? How would you know that everyone had no internet or it was just you? How would I know that the Sliz Bowie is too expensive compared um, to um you Other would hear that aren't I, people would start texting you and emailing you and they wouldn't actually like say hey jason what's up they just send you an email and be like sliz bowie sucks why if is the internet built? wasn't there to shit on things that i liked would i still hate them hmm hmm i don't know how would you get wrapped up in all the hype the hype without the internet well that too it's a complicated question. It is. Well, everybody, welcome to FFIB. I am Jason. That's Tom. We are Finger Flicked in Box, and we're here to bring you uh, the latest news in knives, I suppose. Or, yeah. We're going to talk to you about knives. We're going to talk to you about probably some food talk. We'll definitely talk some moonshine. I know that. And uh, you know what else uh, we're going to talk, Tom? Not coming from talk, me. <laughs> we're going to talk, what would you get in the mail? Oh shit! Uh, but uh, there's a new Darth Vader knife. It's right here. It's got gills. Darth. It's made Vader. for swimming. Dude, this thing is really, really good. Watch this. Mm. That is fresh from the box, flicky and floppy, and it swings like crazy. It's so nice. I actually emailed a message to uh, one of the higher ups at spider co to say your boys have been practicing and they're getting better this thing's bad to the bone it's really really nice the the texture is amazing the the machining's well done it feels really good in the hand and then of course we've got everyone's favorite the magna of cut oh man the the one thing i think is hilarious about their dedication to keeping the font size and the lettering correct is they cram a lot of words into that steel right across that. <laughs> Make America great. Nugget Magna cut. <laughs> and yes, there's a lot of words in there. It's a little bit longer than crew wear, I think. Um, yeah. But yeah, it's really, really nice. This one came from a cutlery shop Ooh. and it's not mine. It's mm -hmm. going on to, friend of mine but i gotta tell you guys this thing is pretty slick if you're thinking about it it does not feel like the caribbean oh good i suppose, I suppose it resembles the caribbean yes caribbean grip is funny because like it's designed to be grippy but it's only grippy in one direction so that is that slippery up and down no it's got peel ply g10 right so it's, it's peel peel ply g10 so the high parts are grippy yep and the low parts are the low parts are um, milled smooth, but I think some of you who are really good at writ dye will have a lot of fun with this. Writ dye. Yep. With the. Black? I think we're going to see some cool stuff where people are doing two or three colors, where they can get the color down in there, and then sand it off the top, and then color it a second time or something like that. I don't know. We're going to see some cool creative uh, solutions to these scales, but. Um, Beautifully done, Spider Co. The detent ball has a travel that's polished through the D the uh, DLC on the blade. Some ah. hero took theirs apart the other day and showed everybody what it looked like inside. So that path that you're going to see on the 15V, it's polished shiny. Yeah. It's also on this knife. Mm. So we don't have that break in of the DLC against the detent ball like we do on many other knives. Pretty cool. Vic Medina <laughs> is having a good night. I look like he was having a bad day, but a good night because he's got a dozen tacos from Del Taco. I think they were Del Taco. No, I think it was eight tacos from Jack in the Box and about 80 hot sauce packets. And That's what I was, it was like, that. And I think he spent, if you think about it, I think they're like two for a buck. I mean, I don't know if inflation's hit Jack in the Box that hard, but I know they're not expensive. They are That's good. True. They're little fried meat pockets. Mm -hmm. We don't really call them tacos, but yeah. Paula sent me a picture of her uh, her Vero collection. It's a beautiful collection, Paula, which is more than I do. Oh, really? 
pretty substantial. I have a feeling she posts a Vero photo every day in the Vero group. Yeah. Uh, Mr. Natalie Joy Parker is joining us. Welcome. Yeah, I forgot the name change yet, can you? Just can't figure it out. Can't, can't change it. it. It's stuck. You should ask Natalie. <laughs> What's up, Bill Booth? Bill had two Dragon Scale Holtz today in a picture. They were money. You know, Tom, the Dragon Scale Holtz are only available at shows. The, I almost bought one. I wanted one. I saw Scott Guns at the Blast Blade show, and I'm like, I should have should have snatched that when I had a chance. Or Morpheus or something. I don't think he smoked a pipe. Uh, Giovanni learned the law in California about uh, employment, I think. <laughs> Carl's here. What's up, Christian? Vic's here. Shout out to our people. Yeah. Randy Dyke is calling Capitol. from the Moonshine Capital. I doubt that. Um, is it a requirement that Moonshine comes in either a mason jar or a big ceramic jug with three X's on the side of it? Uh, you're forgetting a very important jar, the ball what? jar. A ball jar? Yes. What's the difference between a ball jar and a mason jar? The brand. Oh, okay. One of those jars. It was a ball jar. Okay. Yeah, I got three jars of moonshine, allegedly, <laughs> from a guy that I know, and I won't divulge where or who. In the woods. Uh, it might be from Irkway. So, uh, yeah, he uh, told me he was headed home. He's going to go get some. And I was like, dude, I'll take some. So he did. And I had some of the orange sickle today, and it was unbelievable. Orange sickle moonshine? Yeah. So it wasn't it wasn't like light your hair on fire, painful to drink. No, it's like eighty proof, but oh, really? it tasted like a melted popsicle, an orange popsicle. So I don't know what they put in it to make it taste like that. Orange, but popsicle. they used a lot of it, and it was delicious. <laughs> I had it on ice, and it was like I was drinking flat soda. <laughs> I was like, this is dangerous. My wife's like, you are stupid. Put that away. I said, no. So I said, and I put it away. You got three ball jars full of magic juice. What other flavors you got? Uh, I got clear, which is available in regular strength, extra strength, or 190 proof, you know, like Everclear. Yeah. I was like, I don't need that. (laughs) I've been there. Don't need that. You don't need to get extra drunk off of one shot. You can take two shots. I right, there's room in the stomach. Yeah, I could do too. Right. So, yeah, <laughs> potato <laughs> gun. That is still my list of things to make with Camden when he gets a little bit older. I'm excited for that one. Make it all balls, gun. all balls, all balls, Blake. <laughs> so yeah, um, first foray into moonshine. All I know about moonshine is that there's a shortcut that you can make it with. Um, antifreeze and it'll make you go blind and i think i learned that from bart simpson oh okay it's probably accurate yeah frank's here frank's probably made moonshine if he doesn't (laughs) he knows where to get it uh when i was in college i don't know if it was really considered moonshine but they'd sell it and it was in the mason jar and it looked like all like oh rustic-y and it was like drinking fire hey it can be yeah uh, what's my favorite CRK? I'm going to have to go with the Sebenza 31, and you're going to want the wood inlay. Smaller if you buy the canvas inlay, just pop them out and send it to Scott Lacey and have him make you something better. So that would be my choice. Paul and me have been talking a lot, and he keeps on, he always asks me, what knife can I buy between like $300 and $400? And I'm like, there's a lot of options, but everyone's going to default and say, well, why don't you just get a Sebenza? So I was just like, honestly... It took me a long time to like it, but just get a Sebenza. I think everybody needs to go down that road and you need to try one. And then if you hate it, then you'll know that you don't like it and you can then be free of the worry about whether you should try it. But I do think that everybody will probably like it if they go into it open-minded. So um, I like a polished blade rather than the tumbled. I don't care if it has two studs because you really can't finger flick them open anyway. Even if you break them in the way I do, they don't really want to be finger flicked. No, thumb flick is fine. So one thumb stud is fine. 
you do want to break in the lock bar so that they're not hard to open because hard to open knives are dumb. In a world <laughs> of easy to open knives, why do we want a hard to open knife? But once you have that knife, you have to put it in the proper hand so you can open it. But um, the polished blades are really nice. They're really nice. This one's dirty because I've been using it. Um, but you get the polished blades. That's really pretty. And if you get the ones with the polished flats, they cost more, but it's worth it because the bead blast that they use at the factory is very coarse. Yeah. So I would get the polished flat and I would go with the polished blade and then you'll have a very nice knife. Um, I think his main question is small or big. That's, that's a hard one, but I think small. For if you're a pair of three man, go with the small. If you're a PM2 man, go with the large. The small is definitely small, but it's uh, probably a better everyday carry. Um, Tom, you yeah. in, uh, in agreement? Yes. I've never actually carried one, but I've handled a shit ton of them at this point. And uh, I didn't like the small first, but then it kind of grew on me and I got comfortable opening it. I'm trying to find something on DLT right now. I had a question about it. Oh, man. Everything's out of stock on a DLT. Here, yeah. where are these aren't in stock. Go to the buy, sell, trade, and get a used one. Yeah, you can definitely get used ones. There is some in stock. So I was looking at these ooh, with the cool, the really cool ones. So when it says unique graphic, the promise from them is that they'll never make another one exactly like it. But they may make many that are close to it. Hmm. So uh, there's one person at the shop that makes those uniques. Her name is Amanda or Ashley or something like that. And she's the only person that does those. So she will sometimes conjure up a design in her head and then she'll make subtle variations of the design. Uh, I personally like the, um, the box elder the best. That's the blonde colored wood. And it's really pretty. I, I there's a lot of my like, I, I went from being like, I appreciate them, but I'd never own one to now I can't decide if I want an Akasi, a Savenza, or an Umnum Zom, or a Manandi. There's now, there's four of them I actually want. If you go Savenza, you'll be happier with the action of the knife because they put a bushing in the pivot. Okay. That means all the screws get tightened down as far as you can, and the knife operates perfectly. On the Incozies, you have to play the PM2 game where you cheat off the pivot mm -hmm. tension until you get it right and then you have to thread lock it in place and uh that's annoying here's a bunch of small sabenzos with wood inlays with the Ensingo blade so they're around you got to find them if you want to find the exact one you want or i've seen buy sell trade ones for like great deals right now the Ensingo blade is really good i don't love it myself but it's very very good um yeah i don't know i think the wood inlays really make for a handsome knife they make it really good looking knife and it's on the 31s it's one piece so really good looking knife and on the back you get a little bit more of it yeah that's pretty pretty dope yep so i'm already planning out what i'm doing a blade show and i don't know if i'm rushing to the koenig booth again or like i don't need like the coolest crk but I definitely want to make my early bird presence known at the CRK booth. And I kind of want a Manandi and kind of want a Sedenza and kind of want an Unum Zon. I kind of want them all. Well, Christian, if you, if you own a left-handed one and you try to open it with your right thumb, you can't because your thumb will hit the lock bar, which I can't show on camera now. Your thumb will hit the lock bar as you're pushing on the, on the thumb stud and it won't open. So, yeah, you kind of have to have it in the correct hand. But another reason I like them is that they do make left-handed knives. So I will generally be sympathetic to a company that makes a lefty knife. The, uh, the small will fit in a fifth pocket on your jeans. So it is pretty small and it's very slim, right? It's thin front to back. It's thin top to bottom. In a world of spider Spydercos where we have this interfering with the pocket experience this is very small if that makes sense yeah so our spidey hole that we all love is wonderful for opening the knife but it makes for 
It makes her an odd profile in the pocket. Getting a lot of love for the Zahn here. I don't particularly love the Zahn myself. I don't I don't care for the thumb stud placement. It makes for opening the knife kind of strange because it's not a thumb stud, it's a lot, it's a stop pin. So I I know everyone thought it was funny when I was like, oh, Tom's got him a Nandi and the short range Unazon to sharpen like you can't open them. I learned how to open an Unazon and I had some that are really well broken in that shoot open. The thumb stud placement, you have to learn how to use it for sure. It's not like obvious, I guess. Yes. Yes. I want that knife. Tell us about the Menandi. So Menandi is uh it's very small. It's like it's very delicate. It's like this. It's kind of like a pen. It's it's very small. And it's got a very sharp, long blade that's very thin stock. It's a beautiful, beautiful knife. Uh, it's not a knife you'd flick because uh, it... Oh, sure. It's a fancy dress-up church knife. It's a very fancy dress-up church knife. And uh, sometimes, honestly, if you're just carrying a knife to open stuff and you don't need to play with it, you want to look cool, I mean... That's a sexy knife right there. It is. It looks really good. It's got a cool ass clip. It's got cool inlay options. Uh, these are, I don't know. I never see these for sale. They popped up on Blade HQ the other day with carbon fiber inlays, and I was tempted. Tom, tell us about the Elfron material. The Elfron material is that's imitation ivory, correct? It's white. It's a synthetic ivory. Synthetic ivory. Um, yep. The one I handled that I had into sharpen. I've had it in three times. He wanted a mirror, then he wanted satin, and then he used it for a year and brought it back. And he actually carries it constantly. Uh, but he's got Elfron white scales, and I love it, except for when I sharpen, my hands get very dirty. And so it's constant battle of, like, fingerprint off the whiteness. And it gets dirty easy, but it looks really cool. It looks cool. It's just fussy. That is one thing about the box elder guys. If you're a blue jean person, you're going to get indigo on the box elder and it'll make it look blue. Um, if you just hit it with a magic eraser and a little bit of Windex, it'll come out. Lisa, thank you. Lisa is the artist that does the um, uniques, Tom. Okay. Yep. The Uggs. Small Sabenz is really good. It's really good. Um, I got no complaints about it. If you go 21, by the way, guys, the 21 is the original design on the 21. The way you'll know it really easily is that the lock bar and the pocket clip are on the same plane. Now, the purist will tell you that it hangs better in the pocket. <laughs> I will tell you that the lock bar tension is enhanced by the spring tension of the clip. That's not so good. And then also there's this lazy thing that they did where there's an extra hole through the knife. And it's on both sides, and that necessitated a two-piece inlay, I guess. I don't know why they yeah. had to avoid the hole. They could have just covered it, but they didn't. So it's the design different. aesthetic of the split inlay kind of bugs me. It bugs me, Tom. And the reason they did that, of course, is, well, if you're going to make scales and you're going to make lefty and righty knives, you don't know which they'll be at that point. So they just used one piece of titanium, and they drilled them all. <laughs> half of them became lock bar and half of them didn't so um yeah th i'd go 31 over 21 also the 31 has a detent ball that functions as a uh lock bar insert Streamyard keeps asking me to sign into facebook yes it does you're welcome paul Ooh, francisco carried a menandi for his wedding that's I mean, I don't think I could think of a better knife than that. It's classier than a sage, I got to tell you. It is classier than the sage I carry. But that's all I had. This is 10, like 11 years ago, dude. What's different knife world back then? Different me. world. Different, different world. world. No doubt. Sabenza so Puris are... <laughs> they're the Sabenza so Puris are the same people that will tell you that VG10 is fine and it's all you'll ever need. They're the ones that say shiny footprints. <laughs> they're the ones that shiny potatoes. Yeah, they're the ones that tell you that they need to bring back the battle station. The, in my opinion, the 31's an improvement. 
it's that's now I'm trying to remember where does the, does the number have a significance like years of being open or something like that I don't remember what the, the number is um well there's the 21 the 25 and the 31 so I think there is was, a 25 I think it was okay. I think it was Mark two, Mark three, right? So there's a Mark 2.1, Mark 2.5, Mark 3.1. If I had to guess, it's like windows. Yeah. It's a lot of money for an S 45 knife. Well, they make them in Magnica too, but I will say my experience sharpening CRK steel. I haven't experienced how long it holds an edge because I haven't used one myself, but sharpening it, it's a very, um, it's hard. If that's makes sense. Like it, it's substantial. It doesn't just like curl over and easy to sharpen like BG 10. It's like legit. It does not sharpen like spider cove steel. I don't know what the difference is. Everyone's always talked about how they have some magical heat treat. I don't know if that's true, but I will say that, it seems to perform pretty well when I sharpen it. If you're holding out for a Magna Cut Sabenza, you're going to get lower edge retention than the 35 or the 30 or the 45. So mm. if you want to sharpen it more often, then get the Magna Cut. The advantage to Magna Cut is that it's tougher and that the um, stainless properties are necessary. So don't be afraid of the, th the 45s. And they're cheaper too, right? There's nothing wrong with S45VN. It's a perfectly fine steel. It works really well for pocket knives. Also, if you want to get into like part of the purest in the history is isn't uh, S30 was it S30 or S35VN created by Chris Reeve as the first like pocket steel knife. Which what is it? Or are they these first to employ it? 30 was developed to be a pocket knife steel. And there were four or five luthiers that were not luthiers, four or five knife makers that were all referenced when they made it. And then 35 VN, same thing. Like they ran it by him. Okay. Uh, he didn't invent it. Okay. But S 30 V is generally regarded as the first knife steel. That's that wasn't a truck bed steel or a you know, leaf spring steel or I, other things. God, I hate that every time when I was hobby was new, they introduced a new steel. Like, this is 5200. It's a ball bearing steel. I'm like, okay, I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing. Right. Um, it's not necessarily better if it's good for NASA. That it's that means it, it has the properties you want it to have for a pocket knife. Yeah. So something to think about, guys. So yeah, getting it right is important. A lot of times, there's not a lot of magic in a heat treatment. Um, it's just a really good blade steel. And there's something to be said about a company that spends decades perfecting their craft. So Koenig and CRK both kind of follow the edict. Like we're going to make what we make and we're going to make it really well. And we're going to get better and better over time. We're going to continue to make the thing. Um, if you like innovation, then uh spider co might be your jam, but if you want really classy, you know, classy, well-made, well engineered pocket knife and it's hard it's hard to beat a crk however just so we can you know not forget we're a spider co group it's okay if you like this knife over a crk it's okay if you like a crk over this knife but you know what most people that own this or most people that own a crk might own both and that's okay too john if you love the sliz then love it it's there's a lot to love about it it's i have mine right here um, this knife is fantastic. It's the right size. It's the right blade. It's a really slicey knife. It's actually um, this grind line steel that's on there is really easy to fix. You could send this to somebody and have it rubbed out if it had a giant scratch in it and it would take no time. Um, the blade shape is beautiful. The tip is strong. It's got a really nice swedge down the top of the not swedge. It's a what we call this, Tom, the crown. Uh, it's got a crown spine. Um... I don't know what you'd call it. Yeah, crown spine. Somebody ground off uh, this part of the heel on theirs, which really? I thought was a curious choice. I think it's particularly good for holding the knife. I mean, it when is. your pinky doesn't slide off the back of the knife, that's a good thing. 
But I mean, that was a that was a that was a lot this week of the. Uh, but what about a Sabenza? What about a Sabenza? What do you guys Sabenza? Guys, be careful that your knife opinions are not f wholly informed by one person. So we got Nick Shabazz out there. Every time the sliz comes off his tongue, he has to compare it to other knives. And we're all hyper vigilant about comparing that knife to all the other knives under the sun. We don't do that with every other knife. Like when a guy buys an Evo or buys a, what else? A Chavez. Like we don't all bark at you him. You can buy a Koenig instead, instead, dude. Why didn't you buy Koenig? You what? Uh, right. Let me show you point. Man. Let me Shiro, ruin Shiro. your excitement. Let me like just talk shit about a knife that I have no interest in owning or enjoying just because I don't want you to enjoy it. Nick's entitled to his opinion, and his opinion carries a lot of weight because he's important and he's been doing this for a long time. And I understand that. And I, I admire and respect the man, but he spent 17 minutes complaining about things that didn't happen on that knife. Like the, the, the drop didn't crash and the swag that came with the knife was worth the increase in price. And then it has a lock bar insert, which everyone wanted. And the steel's really good and it's well-made, you know, it's and then it turns out, years. then it turns out everybody bought it and there's not enough yet in circulation to satisfy demand. Also, um, he spent a lot of time complaining about uh, flippers Flipper, I flipper thing anymore. Flipper crisis ended three years ago. Did anyone dead. notice that? It's over. Uh, the word flipper turned into scalper because people were like, I'm going to make it sound even worse. And But they kind of just went away. And then someone new comes in like, look at eBay. Look, I took a screenshot of a knife that just dropped and they're using the product photo from the website. Look, they're a flipper. That That's not representational of, especially our group. Flippers are not a thing anymore. Some jerk in, in Colorado had a Sliz Bowie up for sale before it was even released to the dealer. We can only, well, there's only one place that could happen, right? And guess what? They put it up for $2,000. I had three or four people send me screenshots of it go, what are we going to do? I was like, don't buy it. Ew. Maybe don't Ooh. buy it. And guess what? It, nobody bought it. It's still sitting there. So it did, turns out it didn't hurt anybody for that jerk to offer it at two grand. Yeah. Kind of hope he got in trouble. Yeah, that, that is true. So, I mean, that's not to say I won't make fun of you for buying a knife, but. It won't rain on your parade of more, excitement. We should be more even handed with our criticisms of the knives. So the the argument we make for the Sliz Bowie is not the argument we make for the Shiro. And I don't know why. Greco just got a Chavez. Monsters, yeah. right? They are monsters. I don't know. There's stuff I hate too. I'm kind of being a hypocrite, but it's okay to hate stuff. But it was like I was getting annoyed, and I was to a point where I was like not even reading comments on posts. So like everyone put up the pray. I understand it. Everyone puts up their new Bowie post, and everyone's excited about it. And of course, there's people out there that are just like. I don't like it. I don't want to see any more of it. And they just have to say, like, I don't like it. And that's my opinion. And you can't do anything about it. And what are you going to do? I'm like, how about you just shut the fuck up? I don't know. I, my daughter's reaching that point with Taylor Swift. What? <laughs> what do you mean? Well, she loved Taylor Swift. Love, love, love Taylor. Yeah. Now she's tired of it. Oh. I'm so over this, daddy. Yeah, Adam, he got me on that one, too. I had to sell it. Those, I will say, I'll be honest, they are still worth the new price that went up. If you do the math on how much it costs to get an S90V blade and get some fancy carbon fiber scales. But if you're looking for a fluted carbon fiber native, get one on the secondary because you'll spend like 200 bucks. I saw one today for 160 I almost bought it. So look on the secondary for those if you're on the market. Neo Nikon got himself an OG and the newest cage, newest knife toy drop. Nice. We'll repeat it again for those of you who might be new here. Uh, Tom and I nicknamed this knife the goat because we were having a discussion about what Spyderco knife that's discontinued is the best one to bring back. What's the one that we think is the best discontinued Spyderco? And then along comes Knife Joy with a re-release and an upgrade. 
So that's how it got the name the goat. It was not because we called this our the greatest spider co. Now it might be, but that uh, that was the purpose of the goat moniker was just because. Um, well, it's the story. There, were the no, there was no spider co more desired than that one when the XHP was all that was out. It's the whole story that goes into it. It's the when it got discontinued, how the popularity happened. It's the goat because of the story, and I think that's been diluted now that it's been a couple of years since its first release, and people don't realize it. However, I do love that Knife Joy has embraced it enough that they put goat swag in the boxes. That is awesome. Facebook user needs one. There was some for sale today on Knife Joy on some Knife Joy Plus program you can sign up for. They had a couple extra bowies left over. I'd rather staple my sack to the couch than hear Cruel Summer again. <laughs> Challenge accepted, Matthew. One on NAF sale for 200. One what? I'm thinking it's a fluted native. Oh. Yeah, Jay, back to when we're talking about CRK. It's okay if you like this knife. It's okay if you like a Sabenza. It's You know what's even more okay? To like both of them because they're both good knives. Alexa, play Cruel Summer by Taylor Swift. Cruel Summer. That's We're going to get this YouTube freaking copyright shut down. You know what to do. Alexa, pause. It literally, when you upload the video, you know, it goes through looking for copyright stuff. There are several places you can get Bowie scales. Um, Department saying, 13 is probably the fastest with the widest range of stuff, and they make very, very good scales. So I have one as well. Um, I kind of half ruined mine by sanding it down, Tom. I didn't like the the milling. Which one did you have? This same as this one? Not the same type of carbon fiber, but like this it one. Had... I forget what one oh, I ordered you. I remember. <laughs> It had a little micro milling in it, so I tried sanding it down. I need to get back to it and do it more. I have three custom Bowie scales. I have two from Department 13, so I have a fluted carbon fiber one. I have a side cut fat carbon one, which is classy and uh, pretty plain. This one I haven't put on in a little while. I think I might change it up. This one is from Shepard, Eric Shepard. This was a gift from like four years ago, uh, but this one's pretty rad. It's polished. That up. thing is completely sick. Yeah. So this one might be getting swapped out here in the next couple of days. I like to move them around. It's fun. But yeah. For sale at regular prices, that's what you will see for a little bit. And then supply will start to dry up a little bit. People will still be wanting them. And prices will start to go up a little bit. They should be pretty reasonable. Yeah, side cut. That's nice. Yep. I need to shine it up a bit. I haven't decided if I'm going to sand mine yet. I wouldn't mind the little rounded edges, though. I think I got Walters to click off, too. Uh, yeah, Brian Dawson, we can see you. Side cut carbon fiber is really nice, especially when it's got a little bit of a sheen to it because the the glass weave in it will yeah. glisten. Paula, if you have any side cut from Vero, it really benefits from a rub down. Mm, yeah, I do have that. What, what you want is you want some Windex and you want um, gray. You want the gray uh, 3M, 3M scotch Bright pads. Not the red and not the green. You want gray. Okay. Put the Windex on the gray pad and then run it back and forth a little bit and then clean it up with a um there the material has is kind of porous and it gets the it gets the the grit down in it. When you clean it up, it glistens better. No, nice. And it makes the it makes the knife really iridescent. What's the word everybody's using right now? They're not saying iridescent, they're saying um I forget. There's a fancy uh, light word that everybody's throwing uh -huh. around like they knew it before they read it. 
<laughs> Here we go. So if you get it right. Ooh, that's nice. If you get it right, it shimmers. Let's see. Has the lock bar insert improved the lock stick? No. My OG never had any lock stick. I know. Now it had a reliably reblade done. So maybe that is a factor as well. Lock stick is about lock bar geometry. It's not about material. So many of you have OGs and say you didn't have lock stick. Um, I think the concern was that that wearable part would wear out and someday the knife would be ruined. And I haven't yet met anyone who's worn out a titanium knife. So I love that that's such a concern. Like on any knife, it's always a concern. Like no one's ever like, hey, if you sharpen your knife a hundred times, it'll look like a toothpick. So don't do that. But don't open it too many times because that will ruin it. If I go over to the Honda forum, I'm not going to find anybody talking about tire inserts to prevent <laughs> your radials from wearing out on the highway. Your, uh, yeah, little valve stem covers. Right. Shepard does nice stuff. What you need to know about Eric Shepard, I'm going to say it publicly right now, is that he is literally a one-man band. He's the sales, he's the photo, he's the merchandiser, he's the order ordering guy, he's the fact, he's the milling guy, he's the sanding guy, he does all of it himself. So you are buying a handmade thing from him, and it's going to be handmade. Like this scale, he made by hand. He literally sanded it over his sink. So they're handmade. You know what that means? It's going to take a long time. So you're not ordering something from amazon prime here you're getting it from a artisan who's going to make it by hand okay so it's going to be a minute to you have it and uh, eric's really good about telling you what you want to hear for an ordering time but life can sometimes get in the way and sometimes oh i don't know he had to have a valve replacement in his heart you know and then he had to have two surgeries on his heart actually now that i think about it they yeah. went in there twice once to sew it shut and once to replace the valve so um, sometimes life gets in the way and it slows him down. So no, you're going to get it. He's never once stolen anyone's money, but it, it'll take a while. So my uh, suggestions, my suggestions, if you're ordering for Eric, because he wants to give you what you want is find out that what material he actually has in his hands right now, not what material he might be able to order because that's what screws him over a lot of times is getting material that just, becomes unavailable or people push back. So get material that's available. He also has a lot of stuff that's just already made. And I've been trying to get him to post it. But like right now he has like 20 Bowie backspacers sitting in a box that he didn't really think about posting until I'm like, just sell them right now. It's the best time ever to post just that picture of that box. So hit him up yep. on DM. He's got stuff available. If you don't want to wait, if you do want to go into it, just find out what material you realistically want. And uh, this is not that one. Um, he's got some cool stuff, but some stuff disappears and some stuff becomes unavailable. The, but you're going to have to be patient. It's going to take a long time to get it. Yeah. Right, Blake? Eric's work is great, but my scale took eight months. Yes. If one has 100-ish knives, how is one going to wear out a lock on one? One won't. You just won't. You'll be good. Because like Sabenza 21s, they don't have anything, right? They're just titanium on steel. On the Sabenza 21s, not the 31s. Yeah, I'm 21. So those have lasted for years and years and years and years. And I've never heard anyone complain about that about uh, Sabenza 21. Carlito says, yep, buy off his post when he has stuff in inventory. I want to get a Microtech MSI CF scale eventually. So Eric is figured out that, my, that knife. I can tell he's gay for that knife because he definitely... <laughs> He's got it dialed in. He's always showing better and better and better yeah. microtech MSI skills. And 
not only is he making him gorgeous, but he's got 3D milling now, and he's got yeah. um, he's got micro milling. He's figured out how to 3D do it on his machines, so you can get a uh, you can get a killer skill. He is really talented. I'm not taking anything away from that. I'm just saying it's going to take you a while to get it. He's backed up a lot. He's got a lot of orders. He's got regular dudes that buy 10 things at a time. So it takes a while. Good thing I'm patient. Blake had to wait a long time. Yeah, maybe one of you heroes will send Aramis your uh, Bowie. He can make some. Dude, I still haven't installed those. I what? Suck. Your Aramis Koenig? Yes. Or he, I've got Aramis. I've got Aramis uh, PM2 scales here. Oh, Let, are those the ones the Alutex ones you had? Yeah, I got like that dope. ruby. Uh, not ruby. They're like the the purple wine color. Yeah, and the aquamarine. They're mm -hmm. gorgeous. Those are pretty dope. I suck. I need to install those. So yeah. funny story, Tom. Mm -hmm. Um, these face stickers we have. Oh yeah, I forgot about those, but thank you for reminding me. <laughs> yeah, look, look, there's little Tom here. Oh. What's up, guys? Root it's beer. Good. Root beer. So I was at work one day, and I noticed one of my new coworkers had a bunch of stickers all over her, her water bottle, and uh, she and I have become fast friends. And one day I noticed she was having a bad day. She was really stressed out because she's having a drink from the fire hose and she's, you know, anxious about doing a good job. She's nervous. She isn't. I decided to cheer her up one day. So I brought a sticker and I went up to her cube and she was on a conference call and I handed her the sticker and she's like, what, what, what's this for? And I said, it's for your water bottle. <laughs> And she almost came out of her chair. She was so excited. She was so <laughs> happy. She thought it was the funniest damn thing she'd ever seen in her life. So she stuck it on her water bottle and didn't really say anything. And then maybe three hours later, we had a group meeting in the conference room. And she comes in with her water bottle and sets it down. And everybody goes, what is that? <laughs> She's like, Jason, give me a sticker. So then everybody in the office wanted one. And now I'm out. Of just your, we have all the Toms. You just giving all the Jasons out. So you just got a stack of Toms. Look. She gave one to my boss and she was like, what do I do with this? I was like, she's like, she's like this. I said, put it on your computer monitor right now over here in the corner. So I'm always staring at you. And she's like, that's weird. So then uh, HR wanted one. Thank God. If HR wants one, then you know you're all right. Yeah. When HR calls you into a meeting, you know you're all right. 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 Uh, we got Chief Master Sergeant out in uh, out in St. Louis. Chief wanted one. So I gave him one. That was cool. That means uh, I got some cred. So. Yeah, it's there's pretty a, funny. There's, there's, there's <laughs> quite the comment in the comment section. <laughs> Where? Uh, at the bottom. <laughs> Thanks for not clicking on that one. Yeah. Yeah, brothers and sisters, get yourself some Aramis skills. Aramis is the man. He makes killer, killer skills. Please make sure you tell him that you want deep carry. If you don't tell him that you want deep carry, then he'll assume you want the factory clip, and then it won't work. These are the Raptors. Uh, I got a new knife. You did? I did. Um, courtesy of Mr. Travis Vonway of the Knife Joker, I got this sick pair of three lightweight with amazing action. It's it's centered like they figured out how to do that or something. It's got – it's just – I haven't touched it. It's got perfect action. It's dialed in. It's a good little fidget toy. The green color is – it looks dark on camera, but it's very, it's a rich, dark green. It looks really nice. It looks good with the black. It's got black liner or black lock insert. I mean, it's a killer pair of three. He dropped the price on these. I don't know if everyone's aware, but they're 153 now. They were 160 something. So if you're waiting, uh, grab one. 
And if you are a Knife Joker customer, he's got a killer points program. So if you have points built up, it'll be even less than that. None better than Travis. Yep. Man started as an admin in Facebook and now he owns a knife store. It's incredible. But so let's help him get these sold. He's got a few of them. Uh, and they're an awesome knife. So he put a big investment into this and he's got some left. There's no reason this shouldn't sell out like everything else. It's an awesome knife. It's so funny how hard the green is to capture with digital cameras. I don't know why. The, and, the, the handle's definitely green. It's and a dark green. It looks great. I mean, it's it's killer very, and dark. very dark green. Yep. So yeah, that's been a fun little fidget toy. It's just perfect the way it is. We're both just sitting here flicking knives. Yeah. Alone together. Mm-hmm. I got my notes. I got some notes. We talked about the PM2 salt. You know what I did this week that made me really happy? We can talk about this. I did my taxes or I nice. gathered, gathered everything together and took them to my accountant and said, tell me how much money I get. I hope it's give me a lot of money, but it's always a, always a surprise when I get back. It's different every year. Yeah. I love it. Do you put yours off? Oh, I haven't done it yet. I need yeah. to. This is the earliest I've done mine in a long time. I don't, I'm just tired of that stress. My birthday is two days after tax day, and I tend to wait too long. And then I'm still pissed off around my birthday, and I need to quit it. Oh, yeah. Uh, somebody out there today wanted uh, Millie Club coffee mugs. They wanted us to come up with some sort of ceramic... Uh, I don't know what that brand is. I've never heard of it before. They were talking coffee about it. Um, I just wanted to say for the record, like Tom and I would love to offer more merchandise, but we're not going to do it. Um, I, he doesn't want to ship it and I don't want to ship it. And we're too big to make it like a little thing where we just order 25 of them. We would need hundreds. So I would say if you guys want a coffee mug, you can probably go to the laser engraver lady at the top of the group. That's in a pin post. And you can go to there and you can have the Millie Club logo engraved on things. Uh, that would totally work. I need to go for a minute. Uh, Charlotte just walked in. So, okay. All you. Well, since it's all me, I can talk about this for a second, I guess. Uh, so, this year, and I've had this goal since I think it was January 2023, I posted. I wanted to lose some weight before Blade Show. And I went from like 220 to 200 pounds. I was like 20 pounds before Blade Show in six months last year. Well, since Blade Show ended, I have now gained back exactly how much weight I started with. And I'm kind of fucking sick of it. So I've been battling my weight ever since I got on mental health meds. I used to be quite skinny little dude. But when I started taking meds, I, I grew a little bit. And so I got sick of... Trying to diet, I intermittent fast now. I obviously don't eat great, but it's hard for me to eat a lot of foods. Uh, so I am going on uh, Ozempic, on imitation Ozempic, on compounded pharmacy uh, drugs. So I'll take a little shot once a week. And this is my 40th birthday to, present to myself. I found a way to do it for a lot cheaper than the brand name. Uh, and so hopefully I can drop some serious weight this year i have a goal of hitting basically 40 pounds by the end of the year so um i'm dedicated to this i want this to happen i don't like being just in my average dad bod all the time i want to be fit for my kids i want to be able to be comfortable and ride a bike and do a rowing machine and all that shit that having a little extra gut uh makes it you know not great I've lost a lot of weight taking Manjaro, which is like, like, yes, it's a different drug. It's terzepatide instead of uh, semaglutide. But yes, it works very much the same. Uh, I've done my research about it. And um, yes, there is possible side effects. There's possible things with every drug. I take a lot of drugs, so I have to weigh those positives and negatives constantly in my life. Uh, but being... 40 pounds overweight like I am right now is a bigger health risk to me and just my well-being 
than uh, some possible side effects. So I'll give it a try. I don't, maybe it doesn't work for me. Maybe it works great. Maybe I can't handle the side effects and I'll get off of it. But uh, it's through Henry Meds. It's $300 a month, which is not cheap. But I want to do this for a year and I want to get back to my old self where I was comfortable in my body and I could like tie my shoes without having to hold my breath and shit like that. So anyway, that's that's my big news. I've been researching it all week. I'm excited to make this happen. This is a big change in my life. Change my diet. Um, and hopefully be like someone like Randy who lost like 55 pounds. That'd be I if I lost 55 pounds, I would be a small dude. But um that would be awesome. So it's possible. I lost 100 pounds with intermittent fasting, keto. I'm borderline carnivore. Yeah, I can't stick to – I'm good at intermittent fasting diets. I, I don't eat until 3 o'clock every day, and it keeps me fairly not from gaining weight. But you guys see what I eat. I eat, like, children's food when I'm by myself or I'm high or whatever. So it's hard for me to, like, eat good. So anyway, I'm taking a drug. I'm doing it the cheating way. Oprah Winfrey is the person that's responsible for this because Oprah Winfrey started taking it and she got kicked out of Weight Watchers for doing it and all that shit. But um, I'm ready to make this change. I'm excited. And this is this is going to be my new focus on what I do at home. Adam McCoy lost 85 pounds. That is fucking nuts. I stopped drinking anything except for water and black coffee. Yeah, that – I don't drink soda like I used to. Uh, root beer is kind of like special occasions. I only buy it sometimes when I go to the store. But I used to drink – like a year ago, I didn't even drink water at all. So we'll see. But this is my new focus. I'm excited. I'm going to do this the right way. What up? She had a stomach ache, so I gave her some, uh, gave her some uh, roll aids. Oh, fun! She's like, "Why is this happening?" And I said, "Maybe it's the, maybe it's the uh, Japanese ramen she inhaled at dinner." <laughs> She's like, "I don't think so." I said, "Okay." No, I was talking about my my weight loss journey. I'm about to begin. And hopefully, I'm successful at this year. I'm just tired yeah. of being, just tired of being this weight. I've been this weight for fucking years. I've gone up, I've gone down, but this is like my baseline, and I'm ready to change that back to where it was when I was 30. I, I'm 40 years old. I don't want to be unflexible and have problems tying my shoes and have to like just all the stuff that comes with being overweight. It's just it's just uncomfortable, and I'm ready to change. No, seriously, stop. Don't even fuck with that. That's not funny. I feel uncomfortable. I feel unbalanced. No. Look how big Tom's head is. Supposedly, we can do picture in picture layout. I don't know what that does for us. Ooh. Let's find out. Little Tom, big Jason. <laughs> um big topic so normally we gotta change this this can't be this way thank god now i can talk because i'm looking at that way or that way uh so blade show texas happened which is i assume is why they have not dropped the blade show Whoa, crazy. Look what we can do. What are you doing? I don't know. Playing with the layout. Um, so I have a hunch, though. Blade Show Atlanta tickets for early birds should drop soon. Like last year, they dropped in 
February, I think. So they should be out soon. When Blade Show tickets come out, if you have any inkling that you think you're going to go to the show and you want to do the show the correct way, buy an early bird ticket when it comes out. Even if there's like a 50% chance that you're not going to go to the show, buy a ticket and you can sell it no problem if you can't make it to the show. That's not an issue. But if you don't get one, you're going to be shut out of luck unless you can buy someone else's. It does make a difference if you want to get the coolest of the cool knives and get the real stand in line before the show experience. You got to get the early bird ticket. I thought the stand in line part was insane the first year we went, but now it might be my favorite part. Oh, it's my favorite part for sure. Getting there at five in the morning and standing outside for five hours actually is a great time. It's a good hang. As long as it doesn't rain. If it rains, I don't know what we'll do. Yeah, but it's just like a line full of people like, oh, I know that guy from Instagram. Oh, that's that guy owns a knife company. It's just like everyone's there and we're all excited and we're all talking knives. It's blissful. The hardware on the new Sliz Bowie is titanium. You're going to want to be careful as you uh, take the knife apart. It's kind of fussy. The screw holes are shallow. And the T8 is not quite a T8. It's kind of a T8 and a half. So be careful. Um, I almost stripped my clip side pivot uh, because, yes, it's not really a T8-ish. It's it's ish. You can anno it. Jason, what is your advice on anoing a Sliz Bowie, though? Because you said this and you go, shit, I said I wasn't going to do this again. I've anoed multiple Sliz Bowies and not having blasting equipment. I don't recommend it at home. I recommend you hire somebody to do it for you so that it's done right. Because every time I've done them, it hasn't gone as well as I thought it would. <laughs> uh, it ends up being inconsistent because the texture itself is inconsistent. So uh, I'm just having trouble with it. If you guys do it yourself, uh, let me know. Tag me in it so I can see it. But just having trouble. Yeah, dude, There's wear a Millie Club shirt. That was pretty cool. Like walking around, there, there was 50 to 100 people wearing Millie Club shirts. It was great. Uh, they are, I think, buy one, get one free. They're getting pretty low on stock, but there's some still on Rex website, the Millie Club shirts. Uh, it might seem like a simple, like, oh, cool, I'll identify myself as a Facebook group. No, it's not just that. There is an army of other people wearing the shirts that you'll be like, oh, shit, this is my posse. And you will link up. It will create fun for you by wearing this shirt. You'll be part of the club. You'll feel like you fit right in. That being said, I don't usually wear mine. Yeah, me neither. <laughs> Bad Jason. My This is part of my goal. Like, So I've been working, working all this year since January to get back to the weight that I can fit my Millie Club shirt. This is my first primary driving factor. So I want to be able to fit that shirt. So I need to drop about 17 pounds to get there. Or I can buy a new shirt, I guess. But that, su that sucks all the fun out of it. More vegetables, Tom. Those the dirty green things on the ground? Yeah. Yeah. All the blues are sold out? Yeah. We'll have to find a new t-shirt vendor. Yeah. I, fucking, I will bug my friend at House of Blanks again. He was doing an order. I got him graphics, and he was giving me pricing to do the graffiti emblem on some shirts and some hoodies. So I'll bug him again. Prison style burpee. <laughs> Those make me so dizzy. Oh, my God. Doing burpees. Such a simple act. The advantage is, is that the super hot, super desirable stuff sells out in the first 45 minutes of the early bird. And then it's all gone. And then and the rest the of the people noon, When the doors open at noon, you will not have access to that rare, cool stuff. Uh, there's a reason why people get in line like days early, probably. Right. Because they're after something in this blade show. If you see something, if you go to a group for some fancy maker and you say, like, where did that come from? The answer is probably Blade Show. 
if something is really unique and really hot and really special, it, it's a, probably a show knife. And that's the stuff that the early bird tickets that you get to swoop up. The stuff that you can flip or scalp or whatever, that's early bird. Go in there and snatch stuff up as fast as you can. And standing in line is, like Jason said, a fucking great time. A Facebook user has a personal friend that could do t-shirts at volume. Thanks, Facebook user. Yeah, it's true. You don't necessarily have to eat vegetables. You can eat the animals that eat the vegetables and just That's, live on that. That makes sense because it's yeah. like it processes it. It's like better. I can't eat steak. I can't swallow it. I can't swallow a lot of meat. That's part of my problem. I can swallow cookies. I can swallow ice cream. I can swallow sweet stuff. But I have a real problem. I can't swallow carrots. I can't swallow a lot of food. Just I can't do it. Ground beef is hard. And it's just a problem I have to deal with. So my diet is uh, different. I can't eat out at restaurants very often because I have a phobia that I'm going to choke. Um, so, yeah, eating is a tough thing for me. So this is not going to be fun force feeding myself lots of high protein stuff. Put it in a milkshake blender. I do like milkshakes. Any other knife related content we should cover today? Um, there is a new Manix at Blade HQ. It's the minty color one with the M4 black blade. There is this Manix available, the white Rex 45 at GP Knives. There is this pair of three lightweight from Travis Baum with Knife Stricker available. Those are uh, the main exclusives I know that have come out recently or are available. So you're going to want to get those. They're all pretty cool. And they're all good prices. There's no better value than a Manix Lightweight. So Manix Lightweight 15V is coming. Oh, yeah. That would be money. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Did you see uh, that spider collector? I forget his name. But he lives in Amsterdam and goes to the Amsterdam meet. He took so a, a uh, contact we know, you and I told me that that person is a personal friend of Eric Glesser, and that's why he gets first looks. So he posted pictures on Instagram. The Spider Collector, I think, is his name on there. Uh, but he's, I don't know if he's been involved in Spidey Wiki or whatever, but he's a big-time collector, and he took pictures of all the golden models in 15V trim. So brown handles, all that jazz, and there's a lot of them. There's a lot of 15V coming. Uh the one that I love the most is the Millie 2. Yeah. I'm going to buy many of those. <laughs> That's the one for me. Uh, let's see. I think that's all for now. I can't think of anything else. We have a guest that coming is. up next week, Tom. Uh, I haven't booked anyone yet. We Unfortunately, I forgot that I was out of town on last weekend, so we were supposed to do two shows. And we had to cancel one of them because I was out of town. So hopefully we'll have Sean Loom with Null Knives back here shortly. Um, but other than that, it was kind of nice just to do a show, you and me. I love having guests, but it's also nice to have some banter with my friend. We're, we're focused on each other. We can give each other some quality time. Well, we can get to the comments a little better. Yeah. You know. We get, I mean, where else can we get stuff like this? String bean smoothies, shoot testosterone. Heck yeah. That was what I, moto. I do. I like the idea of the spy moto, but I'm so, well, I'll see when it comes out. The lion steel making it thing. I don't know how I feel about it yet. It's a spider co, but it's like, it's not made by spider co. It's got a hole. I don't know. It's pretty dope looking, though. We'll have to check it out. Wooter is the guy's name. This The Spider Collector. There you go. Well, guys, we'll be back next week. We're going to try to save up some hot knife takes, and we'll bring them to you live. And I hope you enjoyed the show. Thanks for being here. That's Tom. I'm Jason. And uh, we're going to get finger flicked again next week. <laughs> 
<laughs> I'm making it up. All right. Have a good night, everybody.